Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be talking about recording your electric guitar directly into GarageBand. Now, many of these kind of principles will apply no matter what software you use or what interface you use. So uh, I think it's worth kind of maybe staying tuned if you're using some other sorts of software as well. Um, I just firstly want to mention how important it is to record yourself playing guitar. It's an incredible mirror and it'll show you a lot of stuff that you might not realize. You know, when, when we're in the act of playing or doing a, a solo or playing scales or whatever, we're so focused and concentrating on what we're doing that we very rarely get to see the big picture. And, and recording yourself is, it does incredible things for people. I've seen a lot of students make incredible improvements just by starting to record themselves. You know, if you're, uh, some things that you might want to try out, recording yourself playing scales with a metronome. <laughs> hey, woo, that sounds so exciting, doesn't it? Um, but actually, it's really, really beneficial because when you're playing your scale, you're thinking about your fingers and not listening off too much, or you're picking the small movements and staying in time with the metronome, all that stuff. But when you listen back, you can really hear if you're if you're rushing, if you're, you're playing a bit too fast and not sitting with the beat, or you're a bit lazy and you know going behind the beat, or all of the notes that you're playing nice and clear. It really, really makes a lot of things obvious, and it'll tell you the things that you need to work on that you might not have realised. Uh, same kind of thing goes for rhythm guitar. You know, practicing a strumming pattern either with a, just a metronome or using some sort of drum loop. You know, when you listen to yourself back, you'll really hear. You know, you're rushing, playing too fast. You're playing too slow. Is there enough? dynamic variation between the loud and the soft? Are you kind of sitting in the track? Is it grooving? Have you got a nice feel? That kind of stuff, you know. So again, it'll help you point out the things that you're doing wrong and what stuff you need to, to work on. Um, and as well, the last and, and very important thing is, uh, of course, lead guitar, doing solos. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it, while you're noodling away by yourself, you go off into a little fairy land and you can play away and and when you listen back to yourself, you realize, oh, I was using this one lick far too much, or, you know, I, I wasn't using much rhythmic variation, so it starts to get a bit boring, or, you know, it, it points stuff out to you that's really important. So if you're not doing any recording of yourself yet, then please do. It's a really, uh, really great thing to do. So if you want to record yourself, the one thing that you absolutely need is some kind of interface to get between your guitar and the computer. Now, uh, very often, if you've got a good quality guitar and a good quality amp, you're going to want to use a microphone in front of your amplifier, okay? Because you'll generally get a better sound going that way than you will plugging straight into something. But the plugging straight in thing can be really convenient. You know, there's a lot of times if I'm doing, I don't know, an ad for a Wheat Bix commercial or something, then I, you know, it doesn't really matter what the guitar sounds like as long as it's reasonable or, or you know, reasonable to good. And some of the new software emulation stuff is is pretty clever. You know, I, I still don't think it's quite got the character of uh, using a real amp. So I don't tend to use it for like, you know, if I'm making a record kind of stuff. But, but you know, for uh, quick things, it's really useful. And, and particularly for you guys getting into recording, it's a really easy option. So uh, let's assume that you're going to plug directly in for now, because that's what we're going to be covering this lesson. So you need some sort of interface to get between your guitar and the computer. Now, I've got three that I use as a kind of a mobile system, and then I've got, uh, you know, I'm in a recording studio here, and uh, so I've got a, a, a proper quality interface that I would be using, although I wouldn't generally plug directly into that, to be honest. So uh, the three that I just want to mention quickly, and there's lots available, I'm not specifically saying these ones are particularly more amazing than the others, but they're the ones that I think seem to be working best. Uh, I do have one called the iRig. Uh, and it's just a very small unit that you just plug the guitar in and you can plug it into your Mac or into an iPad or an iPhone and it's got a little headphone out thing. Uh, you know, it's relatively inexpensive, very convenient little unit. Uh, it's bus powered, so you don't have to muck around with, uh, you know, separate power supplies or anything. Um, I can't find mine right now, to be honest, because I mostly use this other one, which I'm about to show you next. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's definitely worth uh, considering the, uh, the iRig as an interface. Um, the one I replaced it with, uh, and the one that I t tend to use the most when I'm traveling, is this one called the Apogee One. Um, I had the old version of the Apogee One, which I liked a lot, uh, got stolen. I had a break in at my studio over Christmas, and uh, I've replaced it with a new one, which is great as well. Um, the really cool thing about this one is it's got a built-in microphone as well. So just built into the box at the top there, it's got a pretty decent quality microphone. Not, you know, a condenser kind of style microphone. So I can use it for plugging my guitar directly in, but I can also record acoustic guitar or my voice or whatever in that. 
Uh, and it also plugs into the Mac, it plugs into an iPad and an iPod, uh, both the old style connector and the new, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's a lot more expensive than an iRig, uh, of, as you'd expect, uh, but I think it's a really good unit. And it, it, you know, this little bundle of the, the, the thing and the cables that fits in my rucksack, and so generally it kind of, I kind of carry this one around for when I do want to do any recording. And because the guitar plugs straight in, you know, it's uh, pretty convenient. Not as convenient as the iRig, but uh, because it's got the microphone in it, I, I prefer it. But more expensive. Um, at home, I have another device called the Apollo Twin. Um, mainly because I really like the Universal Audio plugins, the UAD2 plugins, which I use in my main studio. So if I'm, you know, want to tweak something at home or whatever, and I've been using the UAD plugins, I want access to them, and I have to use this particular box. This is again a lot more expensive than uh, than the Apogee, uh, and I have to plug it in. It needs mains power, so I don't tend to carry this one around like in my rucksack. But you know, when I'm recording with a band, I take it around with me so I can, uh, you know, good, do good quality uh, audio recordings. And this has a, a, a plugin that you can buy a guitar emulation software built into it, which is really, really good. Well, it's not built into it. You have to buy it separately, and then it kind of uh, works with it. Uh, and uh, I tend to use that a lot because it sounds really good. For, for me, the, the best one of the uh, those emulation bunch. So that's what I use that one for. A lot more expensive, a lot more versatile. doesn't have a microphone built in, uh, but it's, yeah, really good sounding unit, this one, if you've got a bit of extra money to spend. So uh, that's my quick little rave about uh, those. Now, I'm going to be using the Apogee today for this little uh, demo, and I'm going to show you act actually how to do it, uh, how to record with it. So uh, it's it's really simple. This one, if you're using this or any other one, you need to plug it into the computer, obviously. Uh, so this one's just USB. And then there'll be some sort of connection for guitar. On this one, it's a separate cable. A lot of them, you just plug the, the guitar straight into the box. Um, it's, it'll probably have some kind of level control thing on it to control the level. Uh, sometimes you have to do it in the computer, but most of them have some sort of uh, level control on the unit as well. So what I'd like you to do if you want to follow along is uh, get your interface out, get it plugged in, fire up GarageBand, and uh, you know, and uh, get plugged into, the, into your interface and uh, join me for the lesson. So what I've got open here is a completely blank garage band session. If you happen to select the uh, recording electric guitar preset, you might have something different, but I wanted to show it to you from scratch anyway, so you know what's going on. So you've got your guitar plugged into the audio interface. Before you start doing anything else, I'd recommend that you go to garage band preferences and then select audio and MIDI and make sure that the audio output and the audio input is the device that you've selected, your interface. That's a pretty important first step. Second thing that you might want to do, if you go over here to the little speaker icon where it adjusts the volume, if you hold down alternate and click on it, it tells you your input and output devices. And particularly important for the one, you need to select this one. If you didn't want to use that and use headphones or whatever, you could select to use the internal built-in speakers. But uh, I think generally you want to be having that select as one. The input device doesn't matter so much so long as you've got it selected in GarageBand correctly, but it sometimes makes a difference for the output. So you might want to check that out as well. So once those two things are sorted, you need to open a new track. Uh, and for this, you can either go to track and go to new track, or you can see there's a key command, which is Alt Apple N, but we'll just select this for now. And you get the option of what it is that you want to record. Now we're going to be recording electric guitar. So we're going to click electric guitar, but before you hit create, it's important that you click down here, this little arrow that says instrument setup. And it should show your device that you're recording with. And very importantly, just down here is which channel doesn't look like much, but it makes a big difference. So for this particular device, I need to be recording on Mono 2 if I want to record electric guitar. If I select Mono 1, it's the microphone and the guitar doesn't get picked up. So you might have to experiment a little bit and figure out which one of those uh, channels for your device is the one that your guitar is plugged into. So we'll select uh, Mono 2 and you probably want to tick this box as well that I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. That's also pretty important. So. Uh, if we just hit create now, there we go. It's given us a, 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 a new track. It's calling it the clean combo. That's probably the default. And if we turn our electric guitar up now, you can hear that we've got some sound. Now, one thing that you might like to check out before we get too busy with stuff is the tuner, because there's a built-in tuner here. If you click on these little arrows, you can scroll through, and one of the options there is a tuner. So if you play a note now, 
Let me tune my ears a little bit flat. There we go. Always important to tune up when you're recording. So it's all a little bit flat. So you can see it's just red. You want it to go blue, which will mean you're in tune. Must be the heat in the room. Anyway, so get your guitar in tune first. That's a pretty important thing. Normally you want it selected back to measures. So uh, we've now got our guitar in. We can hear it. Doesn't sound particularly good. And one thing to watch out for here is the, uh, if you look at the channel there, you can see that it's getting into the red clipping kind of thing. So uh, on my, uh, uh, if I press the button on my Apogee 1, it'll turn into a guitar and I can just turn that down a little bit. Because we don't really want that going into the red, maybe even a little bit more. There we go. Now the important, well not important, but the cool thing that you want to do here is check out some of these sounds. So if you go over to the top here where it says clean combo and click on that, you'll see a huge range of different sounds that you can choose from, from this big hair metal, it's kind of a big heavy metal. Be kind of, you know, proper heavy metal thing. You could check out a cool jazz combo if you want to do some. kind of thing you know some proper jazzy stuff you've got a whole range of stuff there's some quite decent kind of blues uh sets in here you know so you want to have a little bit of an experiment with uh which ones of these sounds you like metal wire that sounds like it could be kind of fun <laughs> you gotta love that 80s stuff there, man. That's uh, really good fun. So, uh, you know, you probably want to start off with something just really, really simple. What's a vibrato blues sound like? Okay, that's not particularly simple. Let's go and find something a little bit simpler than that. Some nice uh, Brit pop burning. Let's. What about Brit pop? Okay, I'm making changes to the current instrument. That's going to be fine. Okay, so. If you wanted to record something, the next thing to do before you do anything else is make sure that your metronome is turned on. So the metronome icon is down here at the bottom. It's really important that that's on. We can close up our amp sound for now, and we're pretty much ready to go. If we hit record, we're gonna start hearing the, the metronome click, and then we can just start playing and you'll see it appear. So hit record, there's our track starting. So. Okay, and then we've got the track. If we hit re uh, return and go back to the beginning again, as soon as I start playing, it should come. Okay, now interesting thing here as well is that you can uh, change the sound later. So if we've decided that was a little bit too crunchy, we can change the sound. And we've got a different sound. So it's actually recording the guitar kind of raw. It's not recording the sound that you're actually making for that particular instant. Now, uh, just to put it into a bit more of a kind of a reality thing, uh, I'm just going to hit save on that. And I'm going to open a little project that we've got uh, here, the We Came As Strangers uh, iLife Preview. Uh, you need not worry about particularly. It just gives you something you can listen to in GarageBand if you want to. don't think you really need to be doing that too much. So... Uh, what this is here, this is the uh, We Came As Strangers remix competition. Uh, we're giving away the stems of the song for you guys to experiment with. So uh, this is just all of the set. I've just muted the vocals here so uh, you don't, because we don't want to necessarily hear the vocals. Uh, we've got the click track on, which is the really important thing. So now we'll just do Command-Alt-N for a new track. Uh, we've got electric guitar selected. And then we've checked that we've got the right interface. I know for this particular one, I need the Mono 2. So, uh, and I've got the little tick box there. Hit create. There's my new sound. So let's pick something. Uh, where's something kind of interesting? Chord stack, chord shimmer, coral, coral stack. What's that one sound like? That's kind of interesting. So the chords in this song I know, of course, because it was my band, and it's going E minor for a bar, C for a bar, and D for two bars. So we could just pop down a little layer now. 
you can see that the music doesn't start for two bars. Generally, it's a good idea to, if you're playing along with a track, like this could just be a stereo backing track that you either, that you've bought from me or from anywhere that you find on the internet. I'd generally move it along a little bit so it's not right at the start, give you a bit of a chance to play in. Although there is actually a function there, a count in function that'll give you a little bit of a beat at the beginning. I don't tend to use that. I just move the, the track along a little bit. So uh, if we just hit record now and let's see what comes out. And that'll do for now. So we've got there one track recorded. Important thing to realize, of course, is that you can adjust the volume, particularly if you're getting into doing different layering sort of stuff. We play it. In fact, we might even we could get rid of the guitars. Okay, and we might decide that we want to add another layer to that. So again, we can just make a new track, electric guitar, 102, tick box is done, create. Let's see if we can uh, find something else, clean combo, Where? what was that funny sound that I, with the vibrato blues, that was an interesting one. Let's see what we can, if we can get another layer going with that one. Back to the start, hit record. We've got another layer, you know, and it's one of the great th fun things with the recording, of course you could be doing that for the whole track. Uh, a really fun thing to be doing as well is recording lead guitar, and there's a great function in uh, GarageBand that can help you with that, which is the loop button. So if we just, uh, or cycle I think they call it, uh, it just means that if you just select an area at the top there, you can create a little loop, which will cycle around and around. So if we make that a little uh, four bar loop, one, two, there we go. Now if we do another track, uh, same thing, electric guitar, mono two, tick box, done. Uh, and let's pick something silly like that heavy metal sound, big hair metal, here we go. This will sound completely inappropriate, but kind of fun. Uh, so as soon as it starts here on beat three, it's gonna start there when we hit record. It's gonna record around and around that little bit, okay? And then we can choose which versions we like later. So uh, let's hit record. I uh, have to get going on this pretty quick because it comes straight in, here we go.
and you get the idea. And the cool thing with this looping idea is that just by clicking on that little number, we can choose which take we want for that little bit. So we can listen back to take one. Or we can listen back to take two. Okay, it's getting a little bit distorted there as well, actually. So we might need to bring the volume uh, down a little bit. One of the things when you start getting lots of tracks going, uh, you need to be careful with your volume with these. So I'm just turning them all just down a little bit just to uh, give us a bit of breathing space there. Okay, that well, the thing that I was concerned about in case you missed that was down in this bottom corner here. If you see those little red lights on all the time, then uh, you know that there's something not quite right. And again, or you could take track three. Interestingly as well, you can also copy these. So by holding down alternate and selecting a part and copying it. So we could make that one take two and that one part three. So you can actually extend it out and have all of the ones that you want. Of course, all of these are editable. So you can uh, move this around. And uh, if you if you want to chop up a bit, uh, if you select the part, move the little timeline to where you want to cut it and do Apple T, and chop it in half. So you can then, you know, if you wanted to repeat that one little bit, you could do it like that. That's not going to sound good because I didn't trim it well, but uh, you get the idea. And uh, that's where you want to start with your recording your guitar. So recording yourself on the guitar is really beneficial. You know, it can help you improve lots of ways, help you improve your time and your playing generally. But you know what? It's actually just really, really good fun too. And the more that you get into it and the more you experiment with sounds and layering and recording different parts and vocals and all of those things, it, it's really it's kind of addictive. It's, I find it uh, probably the most fun that I have in the, in the studio or, or in my guitar playing life is, is generally recording and writing and creating. I find it fascinating and I'm sure you will too if you get into it. So I uh, hope this lesson helps you on that little journey and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.